All right, folks, it's time for the big one. The M3 Max is here. I've been running all the tests on this thing, and I'm gonna answer as many of your questions as I possibly can. How does it perform? How's the fans? How's the thermals? How's the battery life if you have an M3 Max compared to an M3 Pro, for example? We're gonna go into all of that, but straight off the bat, I want to start by dispelling a rumor, okay? So in the days leading up to these Macs coming out, there were some, some leaked benchmarks, namely Geekbench 6 and Blender GPU render times. And those benchmarks showed the M3 Max matching or outperforming the M2 Ultra. And I think that set expectations really, really high. However, in my testing, those were the only two benchmarks that showed results like that. So before I even mention the word Cinebench, we need to just establish the fact that the M3 Max is not faster than two M2 Maxes put together. I, I don't think that that should be that surprising, but I know there are people who will be disappointed if this thing is anything slower than an M2 Ultra. But don't let that fool you. The M3 Max is in no way slow, and we are going to break down all of its strengths and weaknesses today, right after this word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Basis and their new Let's See Power Bank, the perfect companion for iPhone 15. With both magnetic wireless charging and 30 watt USB-C charging, it has an easy to use two-in-one design that makes charging a breeze. And that means you've got maximum portability. Plus it comes in a bunch of fun colors. And the magnetic connection means you can fast charge over USB-C while keeping the battery secured to your iPhone. And these are some strong boys. I mean, I'm really giving it the beans here and it's not coming off but because it supports MagSafe, you can charge any iPhone from the iPhone 12 series, and you can charge anything with USB-C, including like a MacBook Air. Plus a 10,000 milliamp hour battery means you've got plenty of juice to charge two devices simultaneously. You can charge your iPhone while you charge up your new AirPods Pro, for example. Plus that built-in USB-C cable allows for self-charging, meaning you can just plug it straight into the wall and you don't need another cable. So if you want to learn more and save 25% off the Let's See Power Bank, check out the information in the link down below. And now let's get back to the video. Okay, so first I want to address the Geekbench scores that surfaced before the launch of this thing that showed it matching the M2 Ultra. I think that did set a lot of expectations, and while it's still impressive, I wouldn't call it representative. I don't include Geekbench in my testing because I find that in every other test, you don't see those same results. For example, Cinebench, right? Cinebench is a much more demanding test, and when I put all of these machines through their paces, sure enough, the M2 Ultra is faster than the M3 Max. But that's only really a disappointment if you've set your expectations way too high, which is what happened with those Geekbench results. So the M3 Max is 50% more powerful than the M3 Pro, or the M2 Pro, or the M2 Max. That, that is significant. And it's not just in Cinebench. In a more real world example, Blender, the CPU classroom test is a significant improvement on the M3 Max compared to the M2 Max. Still not as fast as the M2 Ultra, but again, the M2 Ultra is two M2 Maxes glued together. So I don't think it's that crazy for one M3 Max to be a little bit slower than two M2 Maxes. But if we're cramming this much performance into a 14 inch chassis, it does make you wonder about the fan noise. So to find out, let's take a listen to all four of these machines. So yeah, unsurprisingly, the M3 Max 14 inch is the loudest and the fans kick in the soonest only about a minute into the test. So definitely keep that in mind if that's important to you. But what about the GPU? This is an area where Apple Silicon can really stretch its legs thanks to a new GPU architecture and support for hardware ray tracing. But as I uncovered in the M3 Pro video, it's, uh, 
it can be a little bit challenging to find stuff that's actually able to take advantage of that. So in a simple benchmark like GFX Bench Aztec, we see a pretty marginal improvement, which kind of makes sense when you consider that that benchmark is testing a 38 versus a 40 core GPU. It all makes sense. Similarly, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is quite well optimized for Apple Silicon, but not necessarily for the M3 specifically, you'll notice that we're seeing pretty marginal improvements from the M2 Max to the M3 Max. But if we jump back over to Blender for a more real world test, this is an application that does a much better job of harnessing Apple Silicon's power, especially now with ray tracing. So first what I wanna do is show you guys the differences between these things with Metal RT turned off. So this is gonna compare the two GPUs on equal footing. We're not allowing the M3 Max to use its ray tracing yet. And immediately we're seeing some incredible performance gains. 44 seconds on the M2 Max, 26 on the M3 Max. So we're already basically tied with the M2 Ultra that has double the GPU cores but we haven't even turned on Metal RT. Let's do that and see what happens now. Okay, render image. And you can already see how much faster the M3 Max is. Holy cow. 44 seconds on the M2 Max. We are now under 19 seconds on the M3 Max. That's nuts. That's faster now than the M2 Ultra which again has double the cores and it's almost as fast as my desktop RTX 3090, which uses the optics render and is insanely well optimized. This is crazy. We're five seconds off a GPU that uses more power on its own than two M3 Max MacBook Pros. That's nuts. So Blender, we're definitely seeing incredible gains. Let's switch gears for a second to compare to the M3 Pro. So we've got our 20 minute render clip here. We're gonna select it on both and we're just gonna start them going. Something that I've noticed is it seems that if you're doing anything here in video editing, those hardware decoders are doing a lot of the work for you. Now that's not a bad thing and it means that all Apple Silicon Macs that have them are going to be really fast. However, going from the M3 Pro to the M3 Max doesn't really net you any performance as we're about to find. All right, couple minutes in here, we're at 50% and 47, 48. There's only a two or 3% difference in these machines when you're doing a render like this. What's going on? Let's wait for the test to finish and get the final times and then we'll run through this. All right, M3 Max is done. Still cooking away here on the M3 Pro, but it's okay, because I already have the numbers for these. So let's just put up a graph. Um, hmm, what, uh, what's going on here? So weirdly enough, the M3 Pro is the slowest of the Pro and Max chips, both M2 and M3. And even more strangely, the M2 Ultra doesn't have any improvements either, even though it should theoretically have twice the encoders as an M3 Max. So. It's very strange. Now, you do start to see some differences in the export. So a simple method here, we grab this exact same project and we're going to export it in full 4K with a multi-pass compression. That is really taxing. It takes a long time to do these exports. And what we noticed was, you know, 15 minutes, 38 seconds on the M2 Ultra. And then the M2 and the M3 Max were literally identical, 26 minutes, 47 seconds, with the M3 Pro much slower at nearly 50 minutes. So you're definitely gonna feel that difference in the export, but for rendering, it doesn't really matter which chip you go for. The M2 and the M3 are definitely slower, but any of the Pro and Max and Ultra chips are basically the same. Let's try this export again in H.264. All right, so the clock has started now, and um, well, I think I might have a couple more benchmarks I can go through while we wait for this to happen. And one of them is 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. This is a test that isn't really gonna tell us a ton about ray tracing, but it does take very good advantage of Apple Silicon GPU cores. So despite the fact that we're only gaining two cores over the M2 Max, 
the frame rate jump is pretty significant. We're going from 149 to 188. That really demonstrates how much faster those cores can be. But in a test like this that's very core dependent, you're going to find that the M2 Ultra does better. 274 FPS compared to 188. That is about what you expect when you almost double the core count. And another area where we see the M3 series of chips making some pretty significant headway is in Xcode. I used a popular Xcode benchmark, which I'll have linked down in the description below, that compiles a wide range of iOS files. And what I found was the M3 Pro is almost as fast as the M2 Max, which is pretty impressive, but even more impressive, the M3 Max is just two seconds off from the M2 Ultra. That is a really significant gain. That is very impressive and it goes to show how those single core performance gains can have a really noticeable impact on tasks like compiling code. So now let's get back to our H.264 export test because this one is really, really interesting. The M3 Max is pulling out a pretty significant lead over the M3 Pro and sure enough, if we fast forward, at 14 minutes and 39 seconds, the M3 Max was done. But the M3 Pro just kept going. Oh, look at that. 23 minutes and one second, we just finished. So clearly the export is where the M3 Max shines, saving nearly 10 minutes off this export. But I wanna blow your minds a little bit because I ran the same test on the M2 Ultra and I'm gonna put that on the graph as well. Yeah, that's right. The M3 Max beat the M2 Ultra by four minutes in the H.264 export. That's pretty incredible. This chip has some serious potential. But now we gotta talk about the obvious question, battery life. The M3 Max is objectively more powerful, which means it's going to consume more power. So in two laptops with the same size battery, what kind of an impact will that have? Well, to find out, I did two types of battery tests, a performance and a video playback test. Now, first of all, in the performance test, we ran GFX Bench the full suite back to back twice. That's over an hour's worth of high load testing. And after that, we were sitting at 69% nice on the M3 Pro and 57% on the M3 Max. That's a difference of about 12%. Next up was the video test. This one I let run overnight for almost 10 hours. Okay, so our overnight 4K YouTube test, you can see we've been going for nearly 10 hours here. We're almost done with this video, but the, uh, the M3 Max is dead. The M3 Pro, sitting at 13%. Okay, so that's not a massive difference. All right, so after booting this machine back up here, it looks like we almost made it to nine hours. That's about a 50 minute difference compared to the M3 Pro. Definitely something that you might want to consider, but I don't think that's really that big a deal to be perfectly honest. And I can't say I'm all that surprised by these results. I mean, it makes sense that in a computer that has a more powerful chip with more cores, it's going to consume a little bit more power. Quite frankly, I think the trade-off here is pretty minimal. I mean, an hour of video playback time might be important, but I would argue that the 20, 30 minutes you might be able to gain in your video export times would be well worth it. Now, I think the real kicker for the M3 Max is gonna be when it makes its way to the Max Studio because it'll probably be a little bit more affordable. I don't know that it's gonna be $2,000, which is where the current M2 Max Max Studio is. The, the Max chip seems to be getting a little bit more expensive now, so maybe it'll be $2,299 or $23.99 or something like that, but that is still gonna be a really good value. And I think Apple did a great job with the M3 Max. Next month, when we start to get some new 14th gen Intel chips, I'm definitely gonna do a comparison there. And I'm also gonna have a video out next week where I'll compare the 14 and 16 inch with the exact same M3 Max configuration to see if there's any limitations that we're experiencing in the 14 inch chassis. So. All of that being said, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, make sure to stay tuned for next week's comparison. And with that, I will see you in the next one.